in an unbelievable twist of fate, AS Monaco decided that, yes, today they were actually going to win a game. Rennes, on the other hand, looked like they just found out their favorite coffee shop ran out of croissants. With this victory, Monaco soared to the top of League One, leaving everyone wondering if they finally drank that magic potion from Asterix's village. Who knew football, caffeine, and a sprinkle of French magic were enough to do the trick? Did someone order an extra large portion of impressive football with a side of glorious goals? Monaco certainly did, and they delivered faster than a Parisian baguette on Sunday morning. Meanwhile, Rennes seemed to be stuck playing the kind of defense you'd expect from a team distracted by a sudden cheese fondue festival. But hey, at least they showed us how not to defend like their lives depended on it. Someone do congratulate them for providing such valuable lessons. Monaco's attackers had a field day as they glided around the pitch with the ease of a penguin on an ice slide. Wait, do penguins glide? Either way, they maneuvered past Rennes' defense like it was made of Swiss cheese, full of holes. In the midst of the chaos, Monaco's strategy could easily be summarized as get the ball, run with the ball, kick the ball, score the ball. Revolutionary stuff, but apparently Centurion's old strategies still work wonders in modern football. One must ask, did Rennes' players lose a bet? Because honestly, there was a moment when it seemed like Monaco was playing against an invisible wall rather than an actual team of professionals. If winning was a person, it'd be lounging at Monte Carlo with a glamorous cocktail in hand, while Rennes struggles to board the party ferry. Well, you know, maybe there'll be a fine wine, improving with age. The goalkeeper was busier than a bee in a sunflower field, swatting away attempts from Monaco like they were pesky mosquitoes. Yet despite their best valiant efforts, Rennes discovered that merely being busy doesn't always mean productive. Monaco operated like a fine-tuned orchestra where every note hit harmoniously, even if some players looked like they found their rhythm at the last concert they attended. Monaco supporters were surely high on delight and maybe pending sugar rush from celebratory macarons. Their cheering was louder than the collective sighs of long-suffering Ren fans who began questioning their life choices. Monaco's play was celebrated as though they'd just won Eurovision of football, complete with glitter goals and jazzy passes. Such agility and style made people wonder if they'd been taking extracurricular dance classes. So here lies the golden question for all you expert armchair critics and Sunday sofa strategists. Could this breathtaking performance by Monaco mean a glorious return to the top for them? Or was it simply a stroke of luck bestowed upon them by the mischievous football gods of France? Who, I hear, occasionally get bored and want to spice things up. What's your take on this grand soiree? Like and subscribe, please.